Assalamualaikum. Welcome to lecture number two of the course Object-Oriented Programming. In the previous lecture, I have shown you a simple analogy to understand the class and the object. So we have seen in the previous lecture that class is actually a blueprint. For example, car engineering drawing, and an object has something that has some existence. For example, my car or your car. Your car. Each object object has its attribute that is variable and behavior that is function. So class is something that is on the paper or on the on the system that describe what is the behavior if any object of that class has been created right so uh, the analogy we have seen in the first lecture uh, we said that there is a class uh, there is a car engineering drawing a drawing a very comprehensive drawing or design that that shows what are the different functions or the behavior of a car so if we are going to build a car using that design we get an actual car then that car is actu is actually the object of that car engineering drawing class we can say right so that car is an object of car class so each object then we have seen that each object in the world has its attribute and behavior and we can represent these attributes using variable and behavior as a function in in a programming language to perform a task described by a class an object of that class must be created so if you describe a c++ class and you won't create an object you are not going to uh, you are not going to describe the task performed that by that class or the behavior exhibit by that class in your program so for that you have to create an object of that class so class definition begins with the keyword class this is what we have seen in the last lecture and the class name begins with a capital letter this is uh, not the compulsory case uh, this is just the option that increase the readability of the program so if you have a keyword class with small s c l a w s and then you have to specify after the space the name of the class that depends upon the user what name um, he chooses uh, so it is recommended that you should write the name of the class that begins with a capital letter a class definition is enclosed in pair of braces this is what we have seen this is the same as the definition of the structure so when you write the definition of the structure it has the opening bracket and the closing bracket and then the semicolon same thing is follow in while writing the definition of the class there is a keyword class then you specify the name of the class and then opening and closing bracket followed by the semicolon so member function that appears after the access specifier public can be called by other function and member function of that class so we have seen the two access two kind of access specifier the public access specifier means that that particular function that appears after the access specifier public if you remember the example that i have shown you in the last lecture i will show you here again in the next slide if you remember that example there is a word p u b l i c and then colon full colon and then there is a function this means that that function that comes after the public keyword is actually a public function what does that mean this means that this function can be called from outside the definition of the class so you can call any function within the definition of that class so any function for example there is a function 1 function 2 function 3 in a definition of a class and you can call function 1 from function 2 or function 3 right by the other function and the member function of that class by the other function means the functions that are outside the class so member function that appears after the access specifier public can be called by other function that the functions that are not the part of the class definition and the member function of that class def and the member function of that class means the function that are inside the class definition these are the member function of the class access specifier are always followed by a colon each message sent to an object is a member function call 
that tells the object to perform a task. So as we have seen that if we want to send some message to the object, what we can do is we can call that, call a function. And this is actually passing some kind of information to the object. So member function can be accessed by object of a class using dot operator. This is what we have seen that whenever you call a member function, you have to use a dot operator with the object. So there must be an object of that class on the left side, then dot operator, then on the right side of the dot, there must be a uh, member function of that class, right? Because calling a function without an object, it doesn't make sense. So if we if you see the real world, uh, if I'm if I'm going to call some function, for example, uh, I am execute. I want to execute the behavior of a lamp. For example, turning it on. Then there must be some lamp present, so that I can execute its behavior, turning on behavior that change the state. So member function can be accessed by object of a class using dot operator. So without object, you cannot execute the member function. That means the behavior of the class. So for the behavior of the class, you must have an object. Kya kis object ka behavior execute kar rahe hai? Kis object ke saath wo function execute kar rahe hai? Isko is tarah se relate kar sakte hai. And second last point hai, each message sent to an object is a member function call that tells the object to perform a task. For example, iski example hum isa se le sakte hai. We have a car. If we want to execute its behavior, for example, uh, pressing the accelerator pedal, we are passing a message basically. Actually, we are, we are saying to the car that go faster. How we can say this to a car? We can we can pass this information by pressing a accelerator pedal. So this is like a, you are passing some kind of information to the object by calling its function, right? So each object send. Each message sent to an object is member function call that tells the object to perform a particular task. So this is the class we have seen last time. Here you can see. So class definition start from line number eight and ends at line number sixteen, and it start with the opening curly braces in line number nine and the closing curly braces at line number sixteen, and then there is a followed by the semicolon. So there is only one function inside the definition of this class. So this is the class is the keyword in line number eight. Class is the keyword. The name of the class, the name of this user-defined class is grad book. And there is a one public function inside the definition of that class. And the name of the function you can easily recognize that this is a function. Display message is the name of the function, and the return type of this function is void. And C out, if you remember from the previous lecture that I told you that C out is used like a printf. You want to display some message on the screen, you can use C out. We will see different usage of C out and C in function. C in is like a scanf function in C, right? C in u is used to take input from the user. Then this is the end of the function. This is the end of the class definition. Then we have a main function, and within the main function, we are we create an object of gradebook, my gradebook, and then we display, we call a function display message with the object in line number twenty-two. You can see my gradebook is an object of gradebook class. Then we have a dot operator and display message function. We're calling display message function. Now it will display the message welcome to gradebook on the screen, right? So in today's lecture, we will write a simple C++ program using C in C out, right? I will show you how how we can write. Um, let's say enter your name, enter age. We take input different values and display it on the screen so you can be familiar with C in and C out. How we can use these functions to display something on the screen or to read from the, something from the user. Some value from the user. Then we will see uh, the member function with parameters, set functions and get functions in class. So what are the set function actually, and what are the get function, and then the constructor, member function with parameters. Consider the same example, the gradebook example. Now you can see this is the class gradebook. It start. Definition start from line number nine and ends at line number eighteen. We have the function display message, right? Now, 
this function has one parameter of type string right so the course name is an object of string class and this is where we include the string class hash include string so program uses C++ standard string class like uh, we have a string dot h in, in, in C programming language similarly we have a string class this is not a header file string class in C++ standard library we can make an object of string and we can store any length of string inside that object in that object right so it, it's like a character array right in C I will show you an example with this right so with small strng and you write the name of the object so this is a class this is the object you are passing this object string object to the display message function and what is happening inside the display message function is there's a C out it display the message welcome to the gradebook for the course name the string that you are passing to this function when you call that function so now in the main what is happening you create an object name of the course a string type object then you create a my gradebook object whose type is gradebook and then you display the message please enter the course name then there's a function get line so I told you before that C out is used to display something on the screen and C in is used to read some values from the user so get line is basically used to read the string with spaces because the limitation of if you remember from the previous course I've told you that uh, the scanf has the limitation that you, it is not possible to take a multi word string using scanf function same applies here with the C in you cannot take input uh, using C in multi word uh, input using C in multi word string input using C in so for that you use get line function you tell from where it has to read and where it has to store right then you call the function my gradbook dot display message and name of the course the course the name of the course the user enter over here so yahan pe user ne isse pehle jo bhi name enter kiya tha input kiya tha because get line you to get line is the function hai, that is the input function it read from the standard input and write it over on this string name of course right and then you are passing this name of course to the display function by calling this display function method fun display function display message function with my grade book my grade book object right so let's let's go first we, we, we are going to write a very simple program without classes and then we will write this gradebook program first we have to include this iostream class then you have to write using name space std I will tell you what is the namespace std and then there's a main function we're not going to write the definition uh, uh, the class we just write a simple C++ program without class with the syntax of C++ that is C in C out let's include the string class as well so that we can create an object of this string okay so let's display the message enter your name C so C in if you use C in we, we were not able to input multi word string let's see what happens then C out enter your age
then we're going to display a C out name is e name is name and age is age end line end line is like a slash n right we can use slash n over here as well now system pause okay let's compile it first okay it compiled successfully so this string we are going to create an object whose name is name and that belongs to the class string right so this is a very a coffee I mean it is a C++ name facility provide card the instead of writing the character array and and checking its boundary and all those things stuff uh, it just provide an object like this we can create an object like this and store any length of string inside it right so let's compile it okay I hope it is visible let me write the name Ahmed Ali so it didn't take the input age maybe we need to flush let's see First, see in no. Age is let's say eighteen, and shows the age. Uh, why in the previous uh, execution it didn't input, it didn't ask or prompt for the age because uh, we write the name Ahmed and then space Ali and using simple plain scene we are not able to take input a multi word string so we, what we can do is we can use get line function as we have seen and we have to so it read input from C in and write it on on, on, on this at uh, on, on this object name right so now you, you you are familiar with the C out C in and this is how we can use C out to display the value of different variables right now let's 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 write the class that is class a grade book class then we have uh, only the public function uh, in the class this function is void display message right and then we are passing a string object to that class Then we are going to display C out book is equal to name. So whatever we information we pass over here, it display it using C out. And that's it. And in the main, let me comment out all these things. So we create an object my grad book and uh, let's let's pass this my grad book dot display message 
and the message is so we have to create a variable first of uh, uh, sorry object name b name so b name dot i can access the function oh, okay we use the same function get line c in comma b name then we can pass b name over here right so this is we have a function member function with a parameter right so if we compile it so expected semicolon over here let's compile it again then it is executing now we have to write some input because we have uh, this function get line c in b name so whatever we write on the standard input that will be written on the name let's say name is operating system now it display the message book operating system right this is inside the class here okay now let's let's look at the book class a simple book class so this is the uh, we use the keyword class and then the name of the class is with capital b the book so we have some private data member in the class and this is so this is the attribute of any book for example if you take uh, any book that book has some name it has some price and it has some number of pages so this is the attribute of that book right and attribute we represent the attribute using the variable and we make the variable private in the class um, I, will, I will tell you why it is private and what does private mean and then we have the public public functions this is function number one function number two function number one is set name two is set pages then set price and then the display function right so uh, public means that everything that is public inside the definition of the class whether it is a member function or a data member of the class it that thing is accessible outside the definition of that class using that class object right if something is private within the definition of the class whether it is a data member or any function in the definition of the class then that private member will not be accessible outside the definition of the class right so you cannot access name pages and prices outside the definition of the class right you can only access name pages and prices within the definition so definition ke andar jitne bhi hamare paas function aa rahe hain un function ke through aap name pages or price ko access kar sakte hain but iske alawa is definition se bahar you are not able to access these private data member so that's why we have a private uh, a keyword with the uh, that is the meaning of the private keyword now why we make the data member private and the function public Um, I gave you the example in the first lecture about the table lamp. If you remember that example, there are two state of the table lamp that is on and off, and it has two behavior that is turning on the lamp and turning off the lamp, right? So, if you just observe in every example that I have gave you, or if you can just pick up any object, then the state of that object. can only be changed by executing that particular behavior of that object this is very important point right if i want to change the state of the lamp for example it is off and i want to change its state from off to on i have to execute its behavior that is its its functionality maybe its capability that is turning on so when i execute that behavior the lamp state changes from off to on i have a radio station for example uh, a radio and uh, uh, current volume is 20 let's say and uh, that is the state of the uh, radio uh, any radio set that uh, what is the current volume current volume is let's say 20 if it is turned on if i want to change the volume i have to execute the behavior that is increase volume or decrease volume if i execute the behavior increase volume it will be increased from 20 to up to let's say 25 and if i decrease the volume it it goes from 20 to down to 15 so 
the point is for every real world object you can change the state of that object by executing that particular behavior right so to enforce this thing in a object oriented programming language we have a access specifier private and public so we make we usually make the data members that are the attributes or the field of the class private and the behavior that is the function the public so behavior or the function in the class are public while the data member of that class are private this is because when we create an object of that class or book class then using that object we are not able to access name pages or prices right we cannot uh, write b for example if we create an object of the book like book b1 semicolon so b1 is the object of book class we cannot write b1 dot name or b1 dot pages is equal to 175 semicolon this is wrong because all the data member of a book class are private so if we create an object of that class we cannot access the private data member of that object using uh, in the main function right so us object ke private data member ko aap access nahi kar sakte because the data member are private how you can access you can access you can you can change the value of those data member or you can get the value of those data member private data member using the public function that are defined in the definition of the class right i hope now that point is clear why we have a private and why we have a public so this also comes from the real world class data the book class the class book contains three data elements the name that is character name 15 so the size of the name is 15 we can have a string object over here as well integer pages and float price there can be any number of data member in a class just as in structure so in structure definition you can write as many data member as you can so here is the same case you can write as many data member as you can but if you follow pure object oriented programming you have to keep the data member private so data member are often are after the keyboard private so they can be accessed from within the class but not outside so we had a detailed debate on this why they are not accessible outside the class and why it should be like this so uh with reference to the structure we can create a structure type variable within the definition of another structure right we can make a nesting of the structure same is the case here we can create an object of other class within the definition of one class right so kisi bhi dusri class ka object aap kisi bhi class ki definition mein likh sakte hain so like this we have a structure book we can write struct book b1 we create an object b1 or we can create a variable b1 whose type is struct book so we can write b1 dot pages is equal to 33355 that is perfectly fine you can do this but if we create an object of book class that is b if we write b1 dot pages is equal to 355 that is not possible that is not allowed why because pages is the private data member of the class it is not a public data member right it is not a public function or public data member if you make that page is public if you remove the keyword private then you can do like this but it is strongly recommended that you keep the objects keep the data member of the class private then comes the member functions these member functions are included in the class uh, there are four member functions in a book class and these are set name set pages set price so there are three set functions now you remember we uh, I, i told you about that we will see what is a set and get function so set function is a function that set the value of the private data member of the object of that class right so set name will set the name value of the object of that class set pages will set the pages value of the object of that class and set price will set the price value of the object of that class then we have a display function so display function is kind of a, a get function so these are the setter we have a setter function and we have a getter function 
so display what display does is basically it display all the information about that object of the book class on the computer screen the information in, in includes name of the book number of pages and the price right so that is kind of a, a getter function usually we have a getter function that returns some value actually right for example get name will return the name of the book get pages will return the pages of that book and get price will return the price of the book right we will we will see this thing in dev c so these functions are followed by a keyword public so they can be accessed outside the class so public is something that is accessed outside the class private is something that is accessed only from the definition of the class right that is through the member function of that class why we make the data member data member of the class private because in a real world you cannot directly access the state of the object you have to execute the behavior to change the state so you have to execute the function to change the value or to access the value of the private data member of that of that object so class data and member function access specifier label public and private that we have seen these are the access specifier public and private it defines the access of that particular uh, data or that particular member whether they are accessible outside the class or not so functions are public and data is private they, this is what we have seen why and why it is so we we already know this because this this concept also come from the real world the data should be private and the public function are public so data is hidden so it is it can be safe from accidental manipulation one of the reason is that you you keep the data hide or unaccessed from the outside the definition of the class and to keep it safe from the accidental manipulation accidental manipulation means that if you assign some wrong value to that at uh, that uh, data then the integrity of the data will be compromised so like this so when you assign the value to the private data member of the object you call the particular function of the class and within that function you can validate the input we will see how we can do this right so the function operates on data are public so they can be accessed from outside the class defining objects so this is how we can define an object we have an object book b1 and then set name or change name set price and set pages or change pages whatever so this uh, previously i have written the uh, written it set name set pages and set price but uh, change name change pages change price these are the same thing that they are the basically the setter function they set the value of a particular private data member of that object of the class and we dot display will display all those values so let's see step by step what happens uh, so when the, this, this first line will be executed book space b1 semicolon the memory is allocated for that object it has the three data member a string space for the page and space for the price then when the next line is executed b1 dot change name so this is actually the set name so this is set name so set name function is executed you are passing the base address of this string and then you are copying this string in the name so name is the private data member of some object which object the object by using which you have called this set name function this set name function right so when this function is executed operating system comes over here i'm saying it again that instead of change 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 just assume that this is set name set pages set price right as we have seen before then the third statement is again the function called set pages so set pages is this function you are passing a value 500 so 500 is assigned to pages and pages is the private data member of the object of book class so we have we have to check hame ab yahan par jo pages aap access kar rahe hain is set 
पेजेस के अंदर फंक्शन के अंदर सो दिस सेट पेजेस फंक्शन सेट नेम फंक्शन आर इनसाइड द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द क्लास आई एम जस्ट शोइंग इट हेयर टू जस्ट टू टेल यू कि किस तरह से वैल्यूज असाइन हो रही हैं इसको राइट सो पी आप जो भी वैल्यूज को पास करेंगे वो पी में आ जाएगी एंड देन यू आर कॉपिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ द पी इन टू द पेजेस और पेजेस इज द प्राइवेट डाटा मेंबर ऑफ विच ऑब्जेक्ट जिस ऑब्जेक्ट के साथ आपने सेट पेजेस का फंक्शन मेन से कॉल किया है उस ऑब्जेक्ट के पेजेस एंड दैट इज बी वन देन द फोर्थ लाइन देर इज अ फंक्शन बी वन डॉट चेंज प्राइस राइट सो एंड यू आर पासिंग सम वैल्यू टू दैट फंक्शन and this is the function so 500 value will be assign over here and this is the function set price you are passing 150.56 so 150.56 will be assigned to price and price is a data, private data member of the object of class book so kis class ka ye private data member hoga us kis object ka private data member hoga yahan par जिस ऑब्जेक्ट के थ्रू आपने सेट प्राइस फंक्शन को कॉल किया है सो सेट प्राइस फंक्शन जहां पर कॉल हुआ है सेट प्राइस फंक्शन बी वन डॉट सेट प्राइस फंक्शन इज कॉल्ड ओवर हेयर सो बी वन के जो प्राइवेट डेटा मेंबर हैं दैट आर डायरेक्टली एक्सेसिबल विद इन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ सेट प्राइस फंक्शन सो नाउ दिस प्राइस विल बी असाइन टू द प्राइस दैट इज अ प्राइवेट डेटा मेंबर सो As I told you before, that whenever you have you want to call the function of the class, you can call it by using some object. So behavior जब भी execute करना है real world में देखें behavior जब भी execute करना है object की presence जरूरी है You need some object to execute its behavior to change its state, right? So that same thing applies over here. You need to have an object. in order to call the function of the class right so object of the same class with the object of the same class you can object execute the function member function of the same class right or jis object ke sath wo function execute karenge us object ke private data member us function ke andar directly accessible honge for example aapne set price ka function call kiya tha in the fourth line so this is set price actually not the change price i'm saying it again change price this is not a change this is set so assume that this is set price set page is set name so set price ka function call kiya you pass some value to that function so the control come to the definition of the class where you define that function and you uh, pa you pass the value 150.56 to that function this value will be assigned to the private data member price now kis object ka private data member jis us object ka jis object ke sath aapne change price ka function call kiya hai for example if i create another object b2 and i call the function b2 dot change price 160 now the price private data member which is a private data member uh If I call this function right, b2 dot change price 160. Now 160 will be assigned to the price data member of b2 object, right? So, जिस object के साथ function call करेंगे, उस object के private data member they are directly accessible within the class, right? So, defining an object is similar to defining a variable of any data type. A space is set aside. for it in memory for example if you declare int x semicolon this means that four byte of memory will be allocated for the variable x same is the case if you if you if you if you create an object of a class like book b1 semicolon then the memory is allocated for b1 object right so defining object in this way that is book b1 semicolon means creating them an object is an instance that is a specific example of a class so we have a class a car class and my car is an is is actually the object of a car class so my car is a specific example of a car class you can say right so object are sometimes called instance variable now calling member function the next four statement in the main is the calling member function we have seen these that is set name set pages set price and display so whenever a member function is called with the object then the private data member of that object can be accessed within that member function so 
b1 dot set pages b1 के private data member set pages जो member function है class का उसके अंदर accessible होंगे ठीक है this is what we have observed so it do not look like a normal function call because you need to uh, have an object of that class to call the member function of that class right this syntax is used to call a member function that is associated with a specific object it does not make sense to say change name operating system so you are passing some value operating system to a set name function assume that this is a set name function I'm sorry for this that there are some function like change name or set name this is actually the set name so if I call this function set name without an object object ke bagayar agar call kare so ye jo string operating system ye kis ye, ye name ko sign kar dega jo private data member hai kis object ka class ke jo aapne class jo likhi hai if you define a class it is same as you define the uh, if you define a structure definition no memory will be allocated until you uh, you create a variable of that structure so if you write the definition of the class no object will be created until you create no memory will be allocated for that class until you create an object when you create an object then the memory will be allocated for that object okay so change name agar call karenge without the object so it won't assign and uh, 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 this is a kind of illogical thing right that I, uh, in a real world you can say that okay uh, i want to execute the behavior i am executing the behavior of a lamp turning it on but there is no lamp actually there is no object right so it doesn't make sense that how can uh, I, if if i say that uh, i execute the behavior of the i want to execute the behavior of the lamp that is turning it on and there is no lamp so lamp should be present there then that behavior will be executed so the object must be here in order to execute the function of that class right the other thing is that the operating system value it has to assign the operating system string to a to a name that is a private data member of that class right character array name now kis object ke ye jo name private data member hai usko ye operating system assign assign karega because we haven't mentioned over here the name of the object i hope you understand this thing because a member function is always call to act on a specific object not on the class in journal so member function cannot act upon the class it has to act on the some specific object that you specify on the left side of the dot operator like here to use the member function the dot operator the period connects the object name and the member function the syntax is similar to the way we refer to the structure member but the parenthesis signals that we are executing a member function rather than referring to a data item so wahan par hum jo structure ke andar humne data likha hua tha data member define kiye the unko directly access kar sakti hain using the variable name of that structure right but here we have we have to mention the parenthesis uh, just to specify that this is a function of a class with the object of the class the dot operator is also called the class member access operator let's let's go and see the program okay now this is a book class the private data member are name pages and price so these are the setter function and this is a kind of a get function you get the information of a particular object on the screen right but not in the main function we can write a separate function like like for example i can write a function here let's say uh, float that is the return type get price now simply write return price return price so this object ke saath aap get 
प्राइस का फंक्शन कॉल करेंगे उस ऑब्जेक्ट का जो प्राइवेट डाटा मेंबर है प्राइस उसकी वैल्यू ये फंक्शन रिटर्न कर देगा राइट सो दैट इज द एक्चुअली द गेटर फंक्शन ओके सो नाउ वी वी क्रिएट एन ऑब्जेक्ट सो वी कॉल द फंक्शंस लेट से सेट नेम सेट पेजेस एंड सेट प्राइस and then we call a function let's say see out and uh, <coughs> price is equal to b1 dot get okay, b1 dot have to compile it so that the get price and line Now let's compile it. Okay. Now in the class, in the book class, we have three private data member, and we have one, two, three, four, and five functions. So we are calling. first the setter function to set the value of b1 objects uh, private data member and then we call the display function to display these values and then we call uh, get price function to just to get the price of that b1 objects price private data member the price jo private data member hai b1 object ka uski value get karne ke liye we have this function so you you can you can create get नेम फंक्शन गेट पेजेस फंक्शन एज वेल राइट लेट्स एग्जीक्यूट इट ओके नाउ यू कैन सी द फर्स्ट थिंग इट डिस्प्ले नेम इज इक्वल टू ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम पेजेस इज इक्वल टू फाइव हंड्रेड प्राइस इज इक्वल टू वन फिफ्टी सो यू सेट फर्स्ट दीज वैल्यूज देन यू कॉल द डिस्प्ले फंक्शन दैट डिस्प्ले दिस इंफॉर्मेशन राइट and then we call get price function so price is equal to 150.56 right so it display that thing so if if we just comment out this thing compile and execute it again it just shows what is inside the display function that's it right so the getter and the setter function are basically those function that are used to set and get the private data member value of that of a particular object respectively so setter function are used to set the value of private data member of that object jiske sath aap setter ka function call karenge and getter function are used to get the value of that private data member of that object of which object jiske sath aap get ka function call karenge right so let me create another name uh, variable object b2 and uh, then let's write b2 dot set name let's say programming b2 dot set pages let's say pages are 790 and p2 dot set price that is 1000.75 right so what i am doing here is i just remove the display now b1 जो ऑब्जेक्ट है उसकी प्राइस क्या है इट विल डिस्प्ले बाय दिस लाइन एंड सेम बी टू ऑब्जेक्ट जो है उसकी प्राइस क्या है वी कैन कॉल द सेम फंक्शन यूजिंग बी टू एज वेल बी टू डॉट गेट प्राइस सो अब बी टू की प्राइस हमें पता चल जाएगी एंड दिस इट्स इट डिस्प्ले इज द डिस्प्ले विल बी वन फिफ्टी पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स एंड थाउजेंड सेवेंटी फाइव राइट सो बी वन डॉट गेट प्राइस बी टू डॉट गेट प्राइस लेट्स कंपायर इट And execute it. 
So B1 price is 150.75 and B2 price is 1075, right? So you can display like this. B2 dot display. Now it shows you the name of the first book, operating system, pages 500, price 175.56. The second object, uh, the value of the private data member of second object, that is P2, name is equal to programming, pages is equal to 719, price 1075, right? So each object has its own attribute. It has nothing to do with the attributes of the other object, right? Okay, let's, let's go to the slide. Data member set and get function. Now you have the idea of getter and setter function. So uh, this is our grad book class. Another example. So we have a function set course name. Now this function, you're, what you're passing, you're passing the object of type string to that function, right? And what is the string? String class is, a, is provided by the standard C++ library. And then you are assigning this string value to the course name. And what is the course name? Course name is actually the private data member, private data member of this class whose type is string. So this is the, you can write the private data member over here after the public or you can write it before the public. It doesn't matter, right? So in the previous example, we have write uh, all the private data member before the uh, public. So private data member is class me clear that is, a object uh, whose type is string the name of the object is course name so with set function you are assigning you're assigning the value to the private data member of the grad book object and there's another function get course name get course name will return the course name so this function returns the object of string type and it returns actually the value of course name course name object Display function will display it on the screen, right? So getter function and setter function are basically setter function are used to set the value of the private data member of the object of that class and getter function are the uh, are the function that return the value of the private data member of the object of the class. Let's see the example program. Uh, another example program, the distance class. Uh, in that has some data members and the member functions. The data members are feet and inches, and the member functions are set dest, get dest, initialize, and show dest. So you can see the set dest function. You're passing two values to that function, feet and inches. And what this function will do, this function will initialize the private data member of the object with which you are calling set dest function with feet and inches. So, aap call karenge, let's say d1.setDest or bracket ke andar kuch usko do values pass kar denge from the main function or any other function outside the definition of the class. And then what will happen is uh, whatever value you are passing to that function, it will assign this value to the private data member of the object of that class. GetDest will return GetDest basically get the value from the user. So it's not necessary if the name is get or set, it will, uh, you can write any name to that function. I can write here, let's say ABC, the name of the function, right? But th if the name is meaningful, it will be easy uh, for, the, for, the, for you and for the other programmers uh, to see the function and uh, visualize what this function will do. So get dust function is basically used to get the information at runtime from the uh, from the user at the execution time. Initialize function will initialize the private data member of that object and show dest function will show the value of the private data member of the object of distance class. Right? Let's go to the distance class. So this is the distance class. It has two private data member, feet and inches and this is the public area, public function of that class showed set dest function what it do is it assign the value you pass to that function to the private data member of the class feet and inches 
सो किस ऑब्जेक्ट के प्राइवेट डाटा मेंबर को ये साइन होंगे जिस ऑब्जेक्ट के साथ आप सेट डेस्ट का फंक्शन कॉल करेंगे तो जिस ऑब्जेक्ट के साथ क्लास का मेंबर फंक्शन कॉल होगा उस क्लास के प्राइवेट डाटा मेंबर को उस मेंबर फंक्शन के अंदर एक्सेस किया जा सकता है लाइक दिस अगर ये D2 के साथ कॉल होगा तो फीट और इंचज डी के होंगे अगर ये D1 के साथ सेट डेस्ट कॉल करेंगे तो फीट और इंचज डी के होंगे बेसिकली ऑब्जेक्ट के होंगे गेट डेस्ट फंक्शन सेम इज द केस विद गेट डेस्ट फंक्शन दैट इज यूज टू टेक इनपुट वैल्यू फ्रॉम द यूजर ड्यूरिंग द एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ द प्रोग्राम Initialize will initialize the feet and inches with zero and zero, right? And show test function will show the value of distance object that is feet and inches, right? So this is the variable. This is a variable private data member of the object with which you are calling show test function, right? So here in the main function. we create two objects with first object dest1 dot set dest we 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 call a function set dest and pass it two values the first value is integer the second value is the floating point value and then with object 2 that is dest2 we call the get dest function that that initialize the private data member of dest2 by the values input by the user and then we have see out dest1 now we are calling here show dest function with dest1 and show dest function with dest2 at the in the first call of the show dest show dest with object dest1 it will show the value of feet and inches of dest1 object in the second call it will show the value of feet and inches of dest2 and then it ends right so that is again a very simple program let's compile so <coughs> now where is that prompt actually in the program if you see in the program <coughs> it first create the two objects then it call this function and this function is called control come over here it pass the first value second value and that is assigned to the private data member of the dest one object then you call a dest2 object then you call get dest function with dest2 object now in the get dest function it display the message see out enter feet and then it it wait for the input from the user so here what is doing it it is waiting for the it is prompting for the input so let's say feet is 5 now the next thing is enter inches see in inches so here you can see if i enter let's say 7.8 inches now it display me the value the value of test 1 is 11 and 6.25 this is we have a sign over here test 1 object ki value private data member ki value ki 11 and 6.25 okay and the value of test 2 private data member is 5 and 7.8 right that we assign over here distance class data member initialization so distance class shows two ways to initialize the data member in an object data member of an object this is void initialize void initialize what it do is it initialize the private data member of the class with value 0 for example if i go to the previous slide and open the same program and now if i call dest1 dot initialize like this i assign the value 11 and 6.25 to the private data member of test 1 and then after calling and then here afterwards i call the initialize function with test 1 now what will happen the initialize will initialize or assign 0 to both the private data member of test 1 object and if you display here using a show test function here using a show test function it will display 0 and 0 let's compile and execute it You see, so test one के पहले उसने वैल्यू सेंड कर दी थी 11 एंड 6.25. Then you call the initialize function. Now it initialize the value of test one private data member. Now they are zero zero. So these are the two methods by using which we can initialize the 
uh, initialize or change the pri value of the private data member of distance object this is initialize and set test function so can object be initialized whenever it is created without requiring a separate call to a member function so this requires that you have to explicitly call the initialize and set test function you have to write d dest one dot set test if you want to initialize its value or you can write you have to write dest one dot initialize right so you have to call these functions in order to uh, initialize the value of the private data member of the object of distance class but if uh, but can an object be initialized whenever they are created without requiring the separate call to the member function yes it is possible so this is called the automatic initialization is carried out using a special member function called a constructor so uh, we will end over here from the next class we will start with the constructor let me summarize our today's lecture in today's lecture we have seen the access specifier private and public we have seen some examples that is a uh, grad book example a book class example distance class example and yes these three examples and in the next lecture we will see what is a constructor why we need a constructor what is the function of the constructor and we will see some of the examples